Hello there, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World on uh, YouTube Medium and at danielrosil.tech. So for today's video, the backup approach I want to talk about is backing up YouTube videos. So a lot of people, uh, content creators on YouTube and whatnot, are interested in how to back their stuff up, uh, their videos up. So there are a few ways to go about this problem, uh, well, this, this, uh, this requirement, and uh, that was kind of a Freudian slip because I do want to basically explain um, the drawback to doing a Google data export. Before I show a couple of workarounds to this problem essentially I want to just explain a thing about backups and uh, you know why basically doing a Google data export is not ideal. So this is not uh, this is not my graphic firstly as you can see this is from a site called business to community.com but um, in backups um, there are three types of common backup approaches that uh, are used. The first one is full backups uh, this was the classic one and it kind of does what it says on the tin each time you download the whole uh, primary data source and then back it up somewhere else so I've talked a lot on this channel about the 321 backup rule about how you want to always have your primary data source which can be anything so let's let's say the primary data source in this case is our YouTube video so um, that lives on uh, you know somewhere in YouTube's content delivery network and there's CDN and of course YouTube is part of Google so that's where that data lives now if you run a full Google takeout and then you upload it somewhere else um, it's not an optimal approach because videos are quite heavy and you're basically downloading and this is of course if you don't export it and I'll show um, in this video a kind of sort of a workaround uh, for that problem so let's say you download the full um, you do a Google takeout download the full export and then you put that up to Google Drive each time then you're doing a full backup now I've seen a couple of videos about backing up YouTube that suggest exactly doing that backing it up to uh, Google Drive and I would just like to say that from my perspective I don't think that's a very good idea uh, because as I mentioned YouTube is owned by Google and when we look at stuff like the 321 rule um, our primary objective is to we have our backup and two copies those all need to be on different storage media ideally that means not on the same physical piece of hardware additionally one of those needs to be off-site so we're taking our primary data source being YouTube and we really want to create two different backups of that so to bring up my own graphic this time this is YouTube our primary data source and what we really want to do is keep one on-site backup that somewhere on our network whether it's on our computer or on like I have in this tab over here my network attached storage device which is a thing that's very popular with a lot of YouTubers for this exact purpose for backup storage now if we are backing up um, our Google takeout or YouTube channel here um, we want to put that to somewhere else in the cloud because if we're just putting it to another part of the Google Cloud I would argue that in the event that you're locked out of your Google account naturally you're probably also going to be locked out of your YouTube account and there's also overlap between the infrastructure managed by Google and that managed by YouTube so I think it makes a lot more sense to put it up to a different cloud and uh, the clouds I would recommend for backup storage uh, Backblaze B2 is incredibly cheap and backup centric it's the one I use uh, you know people also like backing up to uh, AWS S3 particularly Glacier for long time archiving and Wasabi so these some of them are more complicated than the others um, the exact tools vary you can also back up to Dropbox and Box.net um, and other type of cloud storages like this but they're really more optimized for storing stuff like documents and you know backup and archiving really isn't their purpose um, if you are a regular YouTuber and have, have a lot of data to upload and back up and you, you want to take this approach seriously then in my opinion it's probably worth uh, signing up for something like Backblaze just to have dedicated um, really really scalable uh, backup storage available for your videos so what I have done in order to uh, demonstrate so let's just take I've created three uh, 10 second videos and uploaded these videos to my uh, demo account here on YouTube so this one just shows a number one number two number three and so on and so forth now um, the simplest approach that all these videos skip when they're talking about backing up YouTube is to just back up the videos before you put them on YouTube so um, if you are a professional videographer this is probably actually not even going to be enough for you um, by which I mean that you you know you probably want to back up your pre-edit version of the video you'd probably want to back up 
um, the footage, the outtakes, you probably in fact have a good backup strategy in place. But if you are more on the lightweight scale, and certainly these screencasts that I'm recording, like the one, the one that you're watching, that I am backing up, uh, these aren't particularly valuable to me. Uh, I'm at the start of my YouTubing um, career and expedition, let's say, so I'm, I'm happy to basically just back up um, the files after I run them through YouTube. And basically, once you put files up to YouTube, they're going to compress. There might also be a conversion process, uh, but there will be a compression pro compression process. So you'll notice that if you upload a 100 uh, megabyte MP4 to YouTube, whether you use Google Takeout or you use this option, which I'll show in a second, just download it, downloading it like this, you will notice that the file is smaller. So um, I'm not sure exactly about the quality difference in that if there is one, um, it says that there is no quality loss, but I find that hard to believe and I have read about people uh, finding abstracts in their videos. They download it this way, but for my purpose right now, it's worth uh, perhaps a slight drop in quality in order to uh, you know, cut the file size by about half. And that means for me, it's less data up to the cloud. So that's the only reason that uh, in my opinion, it makes sense to actually download after uploading to YouTube. Otherwise, if you are concerned with preserving the quality of your videos, it makes more sense to upload them at the start. So there are, of course, uh, ways to do this without an, an NAS, but as I have a Synology NAS on my network, uh, I'm gonna show it this way. So basically these are, you see uh, one, two, three, the um, MP4s I have created, and I've created this folder. Um, I've created a volume, in fact, that I've um, attached um, Cloud Sync 2, and that syncs up to B2. I actually have my Cloud Sync on pause at the moment, um, but it's generally running on schedule overnight. So that's easy to set up. And what, what this function does, just in case you are interested in uh, getting one of these NASs, although they are a little bit pricey, but uh, if you're doing a lot of YouTube YouTubing, they might be worth it. That'll allow you to basically, whatever I drop into this folder, um, you can create a sync job, a bi-directional, or a just a um, up to the cloud job, uh, or down from the cloud job, upload or download. Uh, to stuff like you know a lot of different types of cloud storage including b2 as well as s3 and uh, as well as wasabi amongst others um, so basically you can you can either do this you can just use the upload button or i can just uh, drag and drop now i'm using linux uh, as my operating system so it might look a bit different on windows um, but you can then click overwrite and what i will show in a second so that's pretty much instantaneous i'm going to actually delete one of those now and that's because I'm going to show a uh, kind of workaround approach in a second to uh, doing this incrementally. Now the most commonly recommended way uh, to back up a YouTube channel is to do a Google Takeout and I'm going to show how it's done but um, bearing in mind the caveat that just doing it this way and uh, downloading the full um, amount because in a good backup strategy that complies with the 321 rule, you want to create another cloud copy and that should not be, as I said, in my opinion, Google Drive. Uh, for that reason, this is not really, and that's that's why um, it's all the points made by a lot of people that Google Takeout is not really a backup tool. It's a data export tool for users that want to liberate their data from the clutches of Google um, for, you know, partially for uh, compliance rules. Google haven't, uh, you know, roll this out completely philanthropically, but also for, you know, just people that want to get their data out. So this isn't a backup tool because in a, if this were, if Google had some great backup functionality in an ideal world, they would allow you to, you know, uh, create a remote location for your backups. And as you made, as you uploaded new backups to new videos to YouTube, it would just extract only those. That would be an example of a good backup tool, but this is just a export functionality. So. Um, firstly, deselect all, then just select the YouTube channel. Then within YouTube, um, it actually by default uh, includes everything to do with your YouTube channel. So you'll get stuff like playlists as well. So I would just select videos. I actually, when I'm doing a Google Takeout, and I do use Google Takeout because um, it is you know a way to get all your stuff out of Google, I actually don't do YouTube. I do YouTube separately because YouTube videos being heavy, tend to really bump up the file size and when you're uploading stuff to the cloud. Uh, so I like to do it, um, I just do video separately so that I can do them in some kind of, and I'm using incrementally and differentially those terms very loosely here, uh, just to mean not moving full backups up and down every time. So just do videos, click okay, 
and um, if you are using Linux as this computer is then you can avail yourself of the TGZ format which can fit up to 50 uh, gigabytes instead of two with a zip file in each compressed archive so that just means that you'll get less files and uh, of course with Linux it's easy to extract TGZs with Windows you can as well you just need some extra software so that's it and then just create this export so I'm actually cheating a small bit in this video because I've already taken this export downloaded it extracted it to this folder called takeout and uh, this is how it's gonna look basically for some reason, even though I actually only selected video, I still got these history playlist and subscription channels. Uh, but this has my three videos and uh, this is basically how YouTube gave them back to me. So when I was talking about a kind of workaround that you can use Google Data Export and your file system in order to kind of back stuff up without all that work involved. So what what I was referring to what I was referring to was this. So let's say I'm just going to get rid of these JSON files, and you could do this uh, more intelligently whether you're on Windows or Linux. But I'm just going to manually delete them because there, there's only three here. So what I can do is just copy this in to this folder on the NAS, and then I can just select skip. And what this is obviously going to do if we take a look in the uh, upload log here as you can see one and two have been skipped and three has been uploaded so uh, if you think about what's happened here and let's get away from the fact that these are five second videos with nothing but the number one and let's pretend this was a uh, takeout of 300 or 400 videos and they were much bigger than that then basically only video three is going to be synced up to the cloud using cloud sync uh, so this is a methodology that um, i was using for a while uh, you just need to make sure if you're going to be doing this that you don't edit the file names uh, so that when you run the takeout again and copy and paste again uh, that they're you know otherwise they're not going to be skipped now another way you could do this if you don't have a Synology NAS I'm going to stick with Linux just for a second here you could use something like rsync and uh, you could have a folder that syncs up to your cloud storage and uh, you create an rsync job between that uh, folder syncing up and the takeout folder and that would only move in the new stuff um, if you're on Windows I'm sure there's a way to do that as well I'm just describing in general the methodology now the final way to do this uh, would be the way that I actually do it and that's that basically as I upload stuff to YouTube uh, I wait for the uh, conversion and compression to occur and then I simply uh, download the mp4 and I upload it to the uh, folder on my NAS and that then, syn that then syncs to the cloud that way so in other words instead of doing a Google takeout and going through that whole process um, every few months I do it every single time I upload a video now there's actually an advantage to that and that's that if you think about it for backups the best backups you can have um, usually you now you want to typically if you're do if you're doing backups for stuff like a, a computer system you'll usually keep a few snapshots but for YouTube videos where your concern is not losing losing stuff or having backup copies uh, you know if you're only taking a Google takeout let's say going through that process every six months no let's say every six weeks then anything between now and the next time you run it you do stand to lose if you get lost, locked out of your YouTube account so for me the best way to protect my data is just every single time I upload a YouTube video I put that into my NAS and it does take me only a couple of seconds because this uh, interface is so easy to use uh, but it just means that you know there's no um, as soon as I've uploaded a video uh, I then download it and then it's backed up and I never need to worry about taking Google takeouts I don't necessarily think that that's the uh, correct approach or th or even that one is better than the other uh, just that those are two options and they're both fine and legitimate and as I said at the start of this video if you are doing professional videography uh, you know at a higher level and you're concerned with getting your original footage then you probably would want to not trust YouTube's compression at all and you'd probably just want to back up the final production uh, role of the video and back that up in this way without backing up what goes up to YouTube at all because ultimately what goes up to YouTube is a compressed uh, s compressed version of your video run through YouTube's own systems so you know if you're a professional and you really are concerned about preserving the quality in the backup then you'll probably be probably be running your own backup system that doesn't involve uh, capturing the YouTube video format at all 
So I hope that's been helpful. Those are a few ways to back up YouTube. Just to quickly reiterate, um, you can firstly just back up the uh, video files initially, which is what I've actually just described. You can run a uh, Google Takeout by going onto Google Takeout and only opting for YouTube and then going into YouTube and deselecting the other things, just grabbing those videos. Um, and you don't need to do a full backup each time. In fact, it's not recommended. It wastes a lot of data. And it's that besides wasting data, it's just going to be slower if you're moving that up to a cloud. So just figure out some way that works for you. I showed what worked on my system here with Synology DSM. Figure out some way that works for you to just copy in the new videos and then upload that to the cloud. Or finally, uh, you can just download each time you upload and put that up. But I just do just a, fi a final reminder for good backups, you should follow the three to one rule. So your YouTube data should be copied onto two backups backup sources. One of those should be onto a cloud and offsite backup location. And as I said, I do recommend not backing up to Google Drive uh, just to diversify yourself away from uh, Google and back it up to somebody else's cloud. Hope that video has been of use to somebody. If you want to get in touch, my email is uh, youtube at danielrosal.com with two L's in Rosal and my website's at danielrosal.com. Thank you for watching.